there's a recession already. Are we, Sixty-one percent of Americans say there's already a recession. Are okay. we better off than we were? No, no, ago? we're not better off. Uh, we're worse off, but it's uh, partially this administration's uh, fault, and but it's the Congress. But it's, it, it also involves a, an economic system that we've had for a long time, and a monetary system that we've had, and a foreign policy that's coming to an end, and we have to, to admit this. You know, the Republicans were elected in 1994 to change the direction of the country because people sensed there was something wrong. We were going the wrong direction, but we didn't do anything. And the year 2000 we did also. We were, we were elected in the year 2000 to have a humble foreign policy and, and not police the world, yet what are we doing now? We're bogged down in another war. We're bankrupting our country. And uh, we're, we have an empire that we're trying to defend. It costs us a trillion dollars a year. And the standard of living is going down today. But it's going down, and the middle class is hurting because of the monetary policy. When you destroy a currency, the middle class gets wiped out. Poor countries don't even have middle classes. We used to have one, and they're on the ropes right now. But it has to do with a fiscal policy, monetary policy, and foreign policy of way too much spending. But it took a lot of years for us to get here. The people in this country have been begging for a change in direction, and okay. they haven't had it. It's time we gave it to them. We've got a lot, of, uh, a lot to get to on the economy to begin with. Let's go to Janet Hook of the LA Times. Uh, Governor Romney, um, you've seen. Governor Schwarzenegger on this one? Um, yes, I think California should do what they want, and uh, we all recognize that. But one thing that hasn't been emphasized here that should be emphasized when we're dealing with the environment and, and gas house, uh, you know, uh, greenhouse gases is property rights. We've, we neglected during the Industrial Revolution property rights and governments and big corporations got together and colluded. And that's what has to be reversed. You have to emphasize the property rights. But I would like to take one minute since I didn't get a chance to answer this uh, discussion on, on conservative versus liberal. We're, we're going to have, I promise you, we're gonna have, you're going to have another opportunity to do that. I, I promise you, coming up in like two minutes, or two questions. I, I just want to go right now to, to, uh, to Janet. Uh, you no, know, uh, the governor says that you have to borrow for a handout of a check from the Chinese. Where are you going to get the money to build the highway? Same old thing. You know, we have a foreign policy where we blow up bridges overseas, and then we tax the people to go over and build, rebuild the bridges overseas, and our bridges are falling down, and our infrastructure is falling down. So yes, this money should be spent back here at home. We have a trillion dollar foreign operation to operate our empire. That's where the money is. You can't keep borrowing from China. You can't keep printing the money. We have to cut some spending. That's what nobody here talks about. Where do you cut spending if you want to spend some money? We need lower taxes, less regulations, and we need to free up the market. We can't allow expect the government to do everything. We have to have faith and confidence that the market works, but you can't do any of that unless you look at the monetary system. Next question is Senator. I wouldn't have appointed her uh, because I would have looked for somebody that I would have seen as a much stricter constitutionalist. Sen Senator and McCain? Uh, this comes from Jay Majumdar from Roswell, Georgia, and he wants to know if you agree with Senator McCain's statement that the United States might need to have U.S. troops in Iraq for as long as even 100 years. I don't even think they should have gone, so <laughs> keeping them for 100 years, where's the money going to come from? You know, the country's in bankruptcy, and when I listen to this argument, I mean, I find it rather silly because they're arguing technicalities of a policy they both agree with. They agreed to going in, agreed for staying, agreed for staying how many years, and these are technicalities. We should be debating foreign policy, whether we should have interventionism or non-interventionism, whether we should be defending this country or whether we should be the policemen of the world, whether we should be, you know, running our empire or not, and how are we going to have guns and butter? You know, the 70s were horrible because we paid for the guns and butters of the 60s. Now we're doing the same thing and nobody even seems to care. The dollar is crashing and you're talking about these technicalities about who said what, when. I mean, it, in, in, 19, in, 19, um, in 1952, we Republicans were elected to stop the war in Korea. 1968, we were elected to stop the war in Vietnam. And tragically, we didn't stop it very fast. 30,000 more men died. So when I talk about these long-term stays, I think, how many men are you willing to let die for this? For something that has nothing to do with our national security. There were no Al-Qaeda there, had nothing to do with 9-11, and there was no threat to our national security. They never committed aggression. It's unconstitutional. It's an undeclared war. And we have these silly arguments going on about who said what when. I think it's time to debate foreign policy and why we don't follow the Constitution and only go to war with a declaration of war.
Governor Huckabee, the idea of a hundred year involvement of the U.S., the idea of a hundred year involvement. You can judge me by those that are supporting me. Congressman Paul, what, what makes you capable of being leader both on the economy okay. and the military? The Constitution is very clear that the President is commander in chief of, of the military, but, but the President is not the commander in chief of the economy or of the people. And when we ask, get asked questions like, uh, how are you going to manage the economy? It's a reflection of conventional wisdom, but of a lot of lack of understanding of how the economy works. The President is not supposed to manage and run the economy. The people are supposed to do this. The, the government is supposed to give them sound money, uh, low taxes, less regulations. The people are supposed to run it. But here we're assuming that the president is supposed to run the economy. We're not supposed to manage. We're what, not supposed what to manage role do you the think the federal smart? government should have in. I mean, does the federal government, in your opinion, have a role in stimulating the economy? Yes, by lower taxes and less regulations, they could do a whole lot by having sound money where we don't print the money out of thin air. That causes the business cycle. That causes your bubbles. We're always dealing with the symptoms and the disease and never saying, how did this come about? You know, it comes about because we have a Federal Reserve that creates money and credit out of thin air. There's a lot of malinvestment. That's the most important thing to understand about the inflation of the monetary system, is the malinvestment. Then later on, people suffer, and you wipe out a middle class. And, but it's, it, the evil of it all is, is the vehicle for financing wars that we shouldn't be in and a welfare state that we shouldn't be doing. So yes, we have a role to play, but it's a negative role. We want the people to be free. We don't want to manage the people and tell them how to live. And we need a commander in chief. But the most important thing on it as a commander in chief is not moving troops around as much as it is having a wise foreign policy that doesn't get us involved in so many things and we get trapped and we, we linger. Year after year we've been doing this for so long yep. and I like President Bush's argument that we have a humble foreign policy when he ran in 2000 and that we not be the policemen of the world. Governor Huckabee, what makes you qualify? I I supported uh, Ronald Reagan in 1976, and there were only four members of Congress that did, also in 1980. Ronald Reagan came and campaigned for me in 1978. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he would do right now, but uh, I, I do know that he was very sympathetic to the gold standard. And he told me personally that no great nation that went off the gold standard ever remained great. And he was very, very serious about that. So he had a sound understanding about monetary policy. And for that reason, I would say look to Ronald Reagan's ideas on money because he too was concerned about runaway inflation and what it does to a country when you ruin the currency. And that's what's happening today. The dollar is going down and our country is going to be on the ropes if we don't reverse that trend. Governor Huckabee.